Good morning, I am Jenny McCarty. I'm founder and one of the owners of Shades of Hope Treatment Center. My youngest daughter, Christy, has been with me. We've been here almost 33 years. She's my business partner and the accountant. <clears throat> she takes care of the business side. And uh, so what I wanna talk about today is, uh, and I'm entitled, it, if it's not one thing, it's your mother. Now, I don't want to give you the impression that all mothers are have problems or, or every daughter has problems with their mothers. But what we see uh, in the field, I've been in uh, the eating disorder field for 33 years and the addiction field for over 40. And in treating eating disorder women, what I have seen with most of them is that mother-daughter struggle and the, and the part that food plays in that relationship. And once the daughter begins to get into recovery, recovery, every relationship has to be renegotiated when you take the food out of the equation. For instance, the uh, in each of the eating disorders uh, brings something different to uh, the mother-daughter relationship and then the relationship with the father. Uh, and so for anorexics, you know, anorexia is about self-starvation. Uh, and they began to, most of your anorexics, uh, have do not want to grow up. They want to stay uh, little. And you know, most of your anorexics are very intelligent. They're very smart women. Uh, and a lot of it is they feel like a lot of times they are in a, a family system to where <clears throat> there is one dominating parent and one ineffective parent. And a lot of times what that will look like, the mother will, might be very dominating and the father uh, be ineffective in that uh, a lot of your, uh, you know, he could be practicing work addiction where he leaves real early in the morning, he's gone all day and all night. Uh, it's not that he's a bad father, he's an absent father. Or he may be alcoholic or there may be some reason that he's out of the home a lot. And so the mother steps up and becomes uh, uh, mother and father, and she becomes the dominant one. And most anorexics have uh, that push-pull with their mother and about food. The mother is, uh, uh, you know, trying to make the daughter eat and will encourage the daughter to eat, and sometimes will engage her husband in helping her make the daughter eat. Uh, and the daughter has one thing and she has control of the situation. Anorexia is a psychiatric disease and has the highest death rate of any psychiatric diagnosis. So it's a serious disease that takes serious uh, intervention and serious treatment. We've treated many anorexics here at Shades of Hope through the years and have seen many of them recover. And we have seen a few of them die, but majority that we have treated have good recovery today. And so you must treat the family system uh, and to look at the dynamic between the mother and daughter, because what happens, the daughter, and she doesn't do this intentionally, but the eating disorder, the anorexia, gets the couple together because they're very concerned about the daughter and they come together to get help for the daughter. And what we usually find is that coupleship is in trouble. And so if the coupleship will begin to work on their own coupleship and the daughter many times will get well, but it's learning about setting boundaries and the mother and daughter having that separation. Uh, and so it is a complex disease uh, and it's complex in working with the, the family and it is that dynamic, that, fa that triangulation. A lot of times fa the father, uh, with any of the eating disorders, a lot of times the father will be uh, wanting to uh, make comments about the mother's body. Consequently, when the daughter hears the father complain about the mother's uh, body, she will take that on. Uh, the eating disorder uh, woman takes on the mother's sorrow. She takes on their shame, the pain, the anger, and she'll act it out in different ways. Uh, and this is why you must do good family systems work in order for the daughter to see the role that she's playing and to step out of it. And that will afford the uh, couple shift to either look at their marriage and improve it 
give help for their marriage and for their individual lives, or they will they will divorce. You know, the daughter will step out of it and quit being the vocal point that's keeping them together. So it's a little different with your compulsive overeaters. A lot of times your overeaters will eat with the mothers. A lot of times they'll both be overeaters. Uh, and a lot of times they'll be morbidly obese, over 100 pounds or 200 pounds overweight. And they'll get together and man bash. They'll bash men, they'll bash the father, and food is their solace. And if the daughter was to find help first, the mother has lost her best friend and best buddy and a lot of times won't like it and she'll try to get the daughter back in to the eating cycle with her. Uh, and so for the daughter to take a step out of that relationship and get help for herself takes a lot of courage. Uh, very seldom will the, father, will the mother follow her in uh, recovery. Sometimes she will. Uh, and, you know, and the mother's not always overweight. Uh, sometimes she's very thin uh, and stays on a diet, and the daughter watches that, and the daughter watches the mother suffer, you know, with every bite she eats, wanting to be thin, and the daughter will carry that pain that she watches her mother have in her anger, and she'll take it out on food by overeating. So that's the, that scenario. And then you're... Uh, Bulimics. Bulimics are about, they taking in massive amounts of calories in a short period of time, up as high as 30, uh, 40,000 calories in a short period of time, not 30, 40,000, 3 to 4,000 calories, massive amounts of calories, where it can cost you uh, over $50 for a binge. That's not uncommon. That's pretty low for a binge. Uh, but they'll buy massive amounts of food, they plan the binge, they will eat the food, and when the food goes in, ah, they get that sense of ease and comfort. It feels good to get the food in there, just like the compulsive overeater. That's what they get out of the eating. It eases the pain of living. Ah, it calms you down, the food does. But then the bulimic has the fear of gaining the weight, and immediately she'll want to find a way to get rid of the food. And it's usually through purging, either through over that porcelain throne, the commode, they'll throw up, they'll throw the food up, or they'll use massive amounts of laxatives, or they'll get into exercise, massive exercise, or do all three. Anything to get the food out of their body so they won't gain weight. So when a, a bulimic purges over that commode and they get all of that food out of it and the, and the timing has got to be just right for bulimic and you have to plan your binges. You can't uh, plan it where anyone's around uh, because you know that if you don't get that food up right after the binge, it will be too hard to get up. And they'll use things, uh, appetite, they'll use different things, uh, spoons to choke themselves, anything to get the food up. But once you get the food up and out, that purge, what they really get addicted to is that feeling of ease and comfort. It feels so good to get the food out. Ah, it feels like such a release. And what they are releasing is the rage from the family. Your bulimics will be carrying the rage. Most of the time it's mother's rage, her anger over an unhappy relationship with her husband, uh, or maybe it's the whole family system has a lot of anger and that they don't have the tools or they're not, can't, aren't given permission to show anger. So that daughter will carry the rage of the whole family and get that release Ah, when they get that food out of their body and it feels clean, it feels good, but they look around and see the mess that they've made uh, and the money that they spent and they'll swear they're never gonna do that again. And they mean it until the next time when those feelings became, began to come up and up and up that they have no way to deal with. They will once again go to the food, they will binge and then purge. For your anorexic, what they will do is they will restrict their food and what they get out of that is they get a lot of attention and they don't always are seeking that attention, but they get it. They get it. It's a very powerful stance with the couple and it gets that coupleship together. 
and if they get high off of their own endorphins. They get high like, uh, like a drug addict will get high in their brain and they like that feeling and they hate to give that up. And your compulsive overeater is very simple, like your garden variety alcoholic. An alcoholic drinks the drug alcohol to ease the pain of living. That's what the compulsive overeater gets out of eating. It eases the pain. And then they begin to gain weight and what they'll do if it's over a period of years will become morbidly obese. So I hope this is helpful. It's a very complex problem, and but there is solutions to it. If you have a problem with food, with any type of eating disorder, or you know somebody that does, give us a call at Shades of Hope. It's, uh, or go online and look us up. Uh, and it's you can find us at, just uh, email me, Tenny, at shadesofhope.com. Our executive director, Cam, C-A-M at shadesofhope.com. We give free assessments uh, and we are willing and open. We've been here 33 years. We've helped a lot of people overcome eating disorders and the family dysfunction. So if, we, if you need us, we're here. Thanks.